In this video, we're gonna talk about my definition of biohacking, and it is vastly differentiated from regular definitions of biohacking. And I've made some distinctions over the years that I think are important for folks to listen to. Coming up. Okay, everything we have is on sale. We'll get to that at the end of this video. So if you're interested in either the Cortex Nootropic Stack, the Smarter, Better, Faster Nootropics Guide, or the Racetam God Guide, which is 80 plus Racetam Nootropic Stacks, very powerful stacks, stick around at the end. We'll explain this stuff at the end about the three, yeah, we've got three products that are on basically a sale until the end of, uh, we'll extend it a couple of days, sometime in the mid this week. Stick around at the end of the video for that. Uh, okay, biohacking. So here's the deal. Let me just uh, be clear. The main topic of this video is that I think differently about biohacking than traditional biohackers. You know, I think traditional biohackers have one way of thinking about biohacking and I have a completely different way of thinking about biohacking. That's point number one. Point number two, I don't think that either one, I do think that my way of thinking about biohacking is probably a little more optimal. It's probably more optimal for sustainability and long-term health, uh, but I am not trying to discount the significance uh, or somehow be derogatory toward other forms of biohacking or how other people define biohacking. Okay, that's like the, the, the second thing. Um, those two things in, in one category, right? It's like sort of a, a mild preface. Uh, the other preface, the, the other sec the second preface would be, uh, look, I think that this is how people traditionally think about biohacking and I don't agree with it or I don't think about biohacking this way. They think about biohacking like, I'm going to modify the basic biological systems that are homeostatic and regulatory in a way that allows me to get some performance benefit, but I won't think about the consequences, right? So like, you know, you, know, you might hear folks talk about, oh, I biohacked my sleep, and so now I can sleep five hours only a night, you know, and it's sustainable for three years or something. Like I did it for three years or whatever. Like you've heard folks out there in the, community of biohacking talk about things of this nature um, you know and, and and or they might talk about like uh, uh, you know just just modifying chemistry in some other way that allows them to go around the basic rules of biology you know allows them to sleep less allows them to recover less and things of this nature and and while that's totally admirable and it's actually really cool it's all really cool because I love testing the limits of biology. I mean, I've been through hell and back with my body and I understand how to get it to do whatever I want it to do at this point. And that's what true biohacking is. And we're going to get to that. Um, uh, but I, I, I think you really just have to be careful. There's so many feedback mechanisms. There's so many things that could go wrong when you try to like say, I'm going to play outside of the rules of basic biology and try to change this stuff. You know, the body has, a, the body is smart. It has a lot of wisdom and I think you really ought to be careful in that uh, in that regard. So it's not, so so a perfect example is the sleep one. And I think traditional biohackers think like this. Well, if I normally require 17 hours, what can I biohack to only require five? And I think basically that's awesome and cool and it's very interesting and attractive and we all talk about it. And I, look, I, I do it to some extent, it all depends, but only in the short term. Generally, it's not sustainable long term. Okay, and so that's where I think traditional biohacking gets things wrong. Uh, now, again, I'm not I'm not saying this is all biohackers, but that's traditionally what it just sort of the undertone of biohacking seems to be. What I think about biohacking is not entirely differentiated from that, but it's mostly different. And how I think about biohacking is very simply how to keep the brain and body functioning really good in the presence of constant environmental insults and constant otherwise insults and even insults that you put on yourself like drinking alcohol etc look a good you know what biohacking to me is is you know after you drink some alcohol as an example and your liver and then your small intestine and your large intestine and or your lymphatic system is trying to clear those toxicants from your body uh, facilitating that process faster by doing something like a, you know like a home water enema right or 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 sauna you know vitamin b3 and sauna therapy to sweat the stuff out or a magnesium sulfate bath a hot ass <laughs> magnesium sulfate bath to 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 you know for the magnesium sulfate to literally go in there and, and encompass and surround some of the to you know toxicants from whatever you might have ingested you know and then get them out either via sweat or force you to you know get them through your kidneys and pee them out or otherwise get them out via waste right that's a strategy of of biohacking for me 
Um, you know, an another you know another example of biohacking might be like yeah, insults from the environment that might mess with neurochemistry from baseline, you know, and then you consuming some sort of nootropic compound or some sort of nootropic supplement or otherwise antioxidant supplement like alpha lipoic acid is a good one, uh, you know, for toxicants in the environment that allow it to cross over the blood brain barrier and be an antioxidant and increase things like glutathione, uh, you know, in your body and, and, and things of this, you know, things of this nature too, right? Um, you know, like uh, it's about it's about looking at the, the massive chemical burden that, that that one you know that one one is is going to have to endure eating uh you know eating foods on the go if you run into a situation where you have to eat foods on the go that are out from a store because you're traveling and you can't keep things in tupperware containers or whatever with you for a week or two like it, it just it's just basically impossible to do that you know and you've got to go out and, and you can't get you know you're to a meeting you got to go to a meeting and you can't get a fruit somewhere out of place because every everything has some processed food you know it's about figuring out how to uh, minimize the damage of you know the toxicants and the toxic byproducts of particular foods that might sit in your small intestine or your large intestine or whatever and might end up being bad for your body. It's trying to figure out how to mini you know, minimize that or mitigate that, et cetera, via supplementation, via certain exercise, via sauna, via other protocols, via many, many other protocols, okay? So to me, that's what biohacking truly is. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not I'm going to try to work around the laws of physiology to get less sleep or something. I think that's cool in the short term, and I do that in the short term sometimes when necessary, but then I always I always have a week of recovery thereafter. You have to have that week of recovery to get things back into normal. You don't wanna just try to stress and stress and stress and stress and stress the body. That's when things break. That's when things break. I've broken many things over the years, you know, and now I'm, I'm, I'm healthier than I was when I was 25, but yeah, experimenting gets you to break things, and so you learn all this over time. Uh, but more so, you know, true biohacking is understanding the massive insult that, you know, the, the massive, the massive biological insult that our modern environment, particularly around chemicals and particularly around chemicals, chemical byproducts of food, even in the digestive process as a standalone, and then the chemicals in the food, uh, you know, as a different standalone, and obviously those things combined, um, and then, you know, engaging in, engaging in ways that after you insult yourself from alcohol, from one thing or the other, uh, to clear the body from the toxicants from said thing or to clear the body from you know the the, the potential damage based on whatever research is available uh, that that thing is going to do that's biohacking to me it's I'm 33 right now you know considering the insults in the environment uh, that I'm gonna have to face over the course of the next you know 70 you know 70 years you know 60 67 years uh, how, how do I prolong the functioning of my cells in my body and the functioning of my brain, uh, you know, of, of neurons in my brain so that, so that I can live until 100? I actually want to be a centenarian. That's one of my major goals in life. Some people's goals are to watch Better Call Saul at 6 p.m. My goal is to fucking be 100. You know what I mean? So, so like, that's what I think about biohacking. Okay, so and, and I and I would say that the, that the first definition, which I think a lot of folks fall into thinking biohacking is where you're just trying to hack the body into not sleeping or hack the body into not doing one thing or the other and trying to make that sustainable. That'll probably make you live less long over time. You know, in my definition of biohacking, which is, you know, again, to just to 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 try to repair the body hardcore from insults from you know the environment, particularly around chemicals. Uh, is more than likely to more than likely to help you to live longer, you know, over time. Okay, so that's that's my position. That isn't to say, you know, that I have some sort of uh, negative position on traditional biohacking. I love it. It's all very cool. It's all very fascinating. You know, I've been doing it for years. I've tr I've tried all number of different experiments, and I, I'm I'm here to report on what what I what I what, you know what ten years of essentially biohacking and various definitions has taught me. I think the whole thing is just super cool. Uh, but I think over time, the more sustainable definition and the more sustainable application of biohacking really is to try to minimize insults from the environment, minimize uh, neurodegeneration from, from the environment via particular nootropic compounds, you know, via, uh, mi you know minimize damage from the body via uh, uh, toxins in the environment and or via decisions you make, like consuming alcohol, like consuming crappy foods from, from a restaurant or something, 
you know, in the interest of having fun for a day or two, um, you know, getting those things cleared from the body a lot quicker thereafter so they don't stay there and do damage. That's my true definition of biohacking. I think it's much more sustainable. Both categories of biohacking are very attractive, awesome, and admirable. And, uh, you know, I hope folks watching this can take something from this, you know, the, the general conservative approach I'm, I'm basically trying to infuse it for you to take long term. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah. Uh, all of our stuff. Look, all of our stuff is on sale. The Cortex stack, very powerful mental energy, speed of processing, motivation, verbal fluency stack. You think I'm verbally fluent when I do these videos, a lot of times I'm taking Cortex. I mean, cort I'm verbally fluent regardless because I've been taking Sherpa for a long time, but... God, Cortex is the verbal fluency nootropic. Run a special on that, watch the video. Smarter, Better, Faster, which is our digital nootropics guide for those new to nootropics that need to learn everything about nootropics plus stacks. And then the Rastatam God Guide, which is 80 plus pro Rastatam stacks, Anorastam, Parastam, Oxorastam, Phenoparastam, Nefarastam, Vasorastam, Coloracetam, um, and whatever other Rastatam, I think Nefarastam, which one didn't we say? Oh, Pramoracetam, yeah. Stacks with all those, teaches you how to use them. Watch the video, thanks for watching. What's up, everybody? Ryan Michael Bala here. Hey, look, uh, listen, if you've been waiting to pull the trigger on any of our products, whether the Cortex stack, the Racetam God Guide, which is a, a guide of, of 80 plus Racetam stacks, prototropic stack that have taken me just about nine years to figure out, or the Smarter, Better, Faster Guide, which is a digital guide. Both of those are digital guides, uh, which lays out how to use nootropics, a bunch of different things, choline sources, Racetams, how to weigh and make your own nootropics, cycling on nootropics, modafinil strategies, uh, everything else in between. Then now is basically the time because we're running specials on everything, so I'm just going to show you what we got uh the cortex stack let's start with the cortex stack that's our stack that combines uridine monophosphate cdp choline artichoke extract and bacopa monnieri pretty highly functional for any number of things motivation speed of processing mental energy it's really a productivity stack that's a thing you know this is a commercial stack that took me a long time to figure out six and a half years into taking tropics i was using this stack like to run a company 18 hours a day uh, and then i basically put it together in a pre-made stack it is called cortex go to livecortex.com watch the trailer the trailer like you know that video up there shows like you know the epicness of the compound that's a u.s army combat veteran who was part of the beta testing program for cortex saying cortex rocked his world and we just sort of talk about uh this is on the live cortex.com website uh what nootropics do and then run through some of the ingredients uridine particularly like we're you know we're we're putting emphasis on there because it's it's very powerful 28 bucks for cortex normally 34.99 28 bucks all right get it at livecortex.com then the smarter better faster nootropics guide which again i've been saying this lately this is the guide for folks that are new to nootropics if you're new and you need to learn how to use nootropics you need to understand choline sources aniracetam stacks uridine monophosphate alcar theanine modafinil protocols you know adrafinil strategies making your own nootropics everything in between we've got the ios version kindle version pdf version meaning these are digital you can download them for any device you have uh, basically this is that's what this is about surgically using nootropics you know we've got stacking alcohol with racetams stacking paracetam with caffeine and theanine anaracetam microdosing just stuff like that very very high level nootropic stuff uh, but easy for folks that are coming in this is the trailer the trailer the trailer on these products are so awesome look it, we, we answer basic questions like can i mix racetams and, and all these different things you, you walk away with a smarter better faster guide knowing how to use nootropics this is an expert modafinil user guy's been programming and using Modafinil for a while. Wait in. It's 17 bucks. All right. 17 bucks for smarter, better, faster. That's a special. Get it at livecortex.com. Lastly, we got the Racetam stack list. Okay. This is the Racetam God Guide. There's 80 or so plus Racetam stacks. Look, faster Racetam, Fenibut stacks, Coloracetam, Oxyracetam stacks, Surgical Centrophenoxine, Oxyracetam, Nupep, Racetam stacks, Paramaracetam, Modafinil. Like, don't gloss over that. that. That's a pretty significant stack here. So we're really putting together stacks that have taken me a long time to figure out. Yeah, you got to watch the trailer on this. This thing is epic. These stacks, you know, turn on any number of different brain functions from verbal fluency to speed of processing to mental energy to all of those, to many different things combined to brain fluidity, just total cerebral output. That's what the Racetam God Guide offers in terms of stacks. Again, this is instantly downloadable, easily digestible. That right there was like an iBooks library. You can get it on your iPhone, iPad, Android, whatever you got. 17 bucks for the Racetam God Guide, all right? All right, guys, all this stuff is on sale. Head over to livecortex.com, get this stuff. We're going to be running all these specials where Cortex at 28, Cortex is at 28, uh, the Rastam God Guide and the Smarter, Better, Faster Guides are at 17 for the remainder of the weekend. It'll be Friday, tomorrow, depending on where you are. Uh, it could be Friday already, but you know we'll, we'll run these specials until the end of Sunday, so you got the weekend to get it done. But if you've been thinking about pulling the trigger on any of our products, this is the time. we got special stuff. is cheap. All right, make it happen. Go to livecortex.com, buy whichever product or all the products, whatever products you've been interested in getting. 
listening while we have these specials going on. Thanks for listening.